I'm going to look at this I squared S DAC, the PT8211 16 bit, based on an R 2R resistor ladder DAC structure. This is going to be a more basic DAC compared to other I squared S units. But for projects that don't need hi fi audio quality, this may be perfectly fine for certain low cost applications. So we have our I squared S data, bit clock, and then the word select for left and right audio data. And depending if the data is left or right channel, it will go to one DAC or the other, get buffered, and then sent out on an audio left and right output. And I'm going to run it at 3.3 volts using an ESP32 for this test. And there's different data formats between I squared S modules. So this one uses the least significant bit justified or Japanese data format. So a demo sketch is going to have to be able to support this. In the datasheet application circuit, there's a little power supply filtering here. Otherwise, they recommend adding this extra op amp filter circuit which may help smooth out any stair-stepping in the waveform. And also, if there's any little digital glitchy spikes of noise getting in there, this sort of thing may help filter that out. And I did put a simple RC low-pass filter, but I didn't do anything elaborate like this. To make this breadboard friendly, I made a little breakout board with today's sponsor, PCB Way. So I can plug this into a breadboard and hook up power and I squared S signals, then I can take the left and right audio and send it to a line input to record it or to just amplify it for immediate listening. This is the circuit that I made. So there's the same power supply filtering from the datasheet, but the output left and right filtering, I just have DC block capacitors followed by a simple RC filter for my purposes. Again, we're just looking for Nothing too complicated. I just need something reasonable sounding. So with a 7.5K resistor and a 1 nano in this filter, the cutoff frequency is 21 kilohertz. So we should have no trouble passing audio frequencies. And the first thing I want to do with the ESP32 is play a 1 kilohertz and a 10 kilohertz sine wave so that I can observe on the scope what the signal looks like. Initially, I tried generating a sine wave directly in software, but in the end, since I'm going to play MP3 audio as well, I decided I'm just going to get a WAV file or an MP3, I chose WAV, from this free audio tone collection. So I downloaded the WAV version of 1 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz tones which are CD quality 16-bit. And in order to play those WAV files or MP3 files from the ESP32, I put them in an SD card and then, using the audio I squared S ESP32 library, I can tell it to either play an MP3 or play a WAV file of a specific file name, which I just comment in or out as needed, and this will play it over I squared S. So these pins are where I connected the SD card, and these pins I connected to the DAC board for the data, word select, and bit clock. I made sure I had these file names on the SD card, and then whatever I comment or enable will play back when I power up. And to make sure we're playing with least significant bit justified format, this command here can be used in the library to configure it properly. On the top trace of the scope, I'm probing an output signal after the filter, and to see how well the filter is working, the bottom trace shows the signal before the filter, so that one's going to be noisier and glitchier and more of a staircase, especially at higher frequencies. Playing back the 1 kilohertz sine wave, it looks reasonably smoothed out after the filter. And there's some momentary glitches there that get filtered out as well. And then going to 10 kilohertz, depending how they generated those test tone 
waveforms. There may only be a few samples per waveform cycle in the first place, and we can definitely see the steps there on the input of the filter. And so you can only do so much to smooth that out. But still, the signal is definitely smoothed and cleaned up by the RC filter. Now to actually see how this sounds, I went to the YouTube copyright free music library and got a couple of demo files. So I'm going to play those directly from the MP3 in the edited video footage. So it's not being played and re-recorded, it's just dropped into this video file and we're going to hear it. Then I'm going to play it on the PT8211 DAC, and I'm also going to play it on this other I2S DAC, the UDA1334A. This DAC has a bit more complexity and features in there, so I'm using the same sketch, and instead of the WAV file, I'm playing an MP3 file. Here's the first song, played directly from MP3, then played on the UDA1334 DAC, and then played on the PT-8211 DAC. And to just get a different style of music and different kinds of frequencies maybe showing up, Here's a second track from the YouTube library to see how that one compares. Overall, considering how simple this chip is. It works okay for basic needs, so it's just another option to have in the toolbox. One thing that I noticed, I'm convinced they've mislabeled the left channel and right channel pin numbers here. When I'm playing the original MP3, so there's differences between what I'm hearing in the left and right, when I played that back on the UDA1334, the left and right channels matched what I was hearing in the original MP3 playing directly from a computer, but when I played it on the PT8211, same sketch running, and all I'm doing is hooking up the I2S pins, the left and right are swapped. So when I was making this video, I had to take the recording I made and bring it into Audacity and switch left and right so that it would be consistent with the original MP3 and the other DAC. So it just seems like this labeling for these pins is what's incorrect, but I kept it this way on the PCB just in case there's something I'm missing. So pin 6 is left, 8 is right, same way on this diagram here. So I don't know. I'm just thinking these are backwards. But that's minor for just experimenting. So left and right here match the datasheet, but I think it's really backwards. So this allows having a small form factor that can squeeze into other projects and give reasonable quality stereo 16-bit sound over I2S.